Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be having a look at GEDmatch and how to use their ethnicity estimates. GEDmatch is great because it's free. So if you've done a DNA test with another company, you can upload that data to GEDmatch and access their ethnicity estimates and their shared matches without paying any extra money. So in this video, I'll show you how to upload your raw data from Ancestry.com to GEDmatch and then how to use GEDmatch's ethnicity calculators. So let's get started. Okay, so open up your Ancestry.com account and click on DNA. Obviously this bit only works if you've already done a test. <laughs> Um, I've just scribbled over the pictures of my matches for privacy reasons since I couldn't ask them if they wanted to appear in this video. So that's why mine looks a bit funny. So in the top right hand corner, click on settings and then scroll down to the bottom of the page and see download raw DNA data and click download. So then you'll be prompted for your password. This is a yourancestry.com password. Um, they put a big scary, ooh, your DNA will not be protected by Ancestry DNA, but we're not publicly sharing our raw data. We're just re-uploading it to another site. So don't panic about that. Um, if you're concerned about your own computer security, then just make sure that you delete the raw data file from your computer when we're finished. Okay, so put in your password and then click confirm. And now you'll have to go to your email and open the email that Ancestry have sent you. And from there, just click confirm data download. So you'll be redirected back to ancestry.com where you can then click on the download raw data. Um, your raw DNA data should download pretty quickly and open as a text file. It'll just look like a crazy bunch of numbers and letters. So save it somewhere where you'll know where it is. And now we're gonna head to GEDmatch. So that's www.gedmatch.com. And if you haven't already created an account, you'll need to create one. It's really simple. You only need to provide your name and email address and it's free. So you don't need a credit card or anything like that. Um, okay. So once you log into your GEDmatch account, you'll be on the home page. On the right hand side, you'll see a menu with lots of options. Um, I'll do another video on GEDmatch in the future that explains everything that you can do with GEDmatch. But just for today, I'll be looking at transferring the data and checking your ethnicity estimates. So we're looking under upload your DNA files and then clicking on generic uploads, which is best for Ancestry DNA. So we then have to fill in some information. So your name, your sex, don't worry too much about the haplogroups unless you've done those tests and you want to upload them. Um, you'll need to add the name of the testing company. So in this case, it's Ancestry. But as you can see, there's other options there. Um, then we have to let them know whose raw data this is. So in this case, it's mine. So I click your DNA, but you can see the other options underneath. Then we have the privacy options. So basically your two options are opt in or opt out. The research and private options there won't be particularly useful for us. So um, I've done another video about GEDmatch's privacy issues, which I'll link below if you're interested in watching it. But basically the opting in and opting out is about allowing law enforcement to access your DNA. So opting out means that they won't be able to use your DNA when they're trying to solve cases, but opting in makes your DNA available to them. Personally, I'm for opting in because there's so many cold cases that have been solved through this method. But if you're uncomfortable with it, then go ahead and opt out here. Now at the bottom, you can click on choose file and add your raw DNA file. So that's the one that we saved earlier. And lastly, click on upload. Now this bit can take a few minutes. So if it looks like your screen's freezing, don't panic and close it. Just wait because the next screen, it will come up. Um, you can see that written at the bottom in red text. So just be patient with that. Okay, so when your file uploads complete, you'll see the kit number that they've assigned to you. You might want to write that down before going back to the home page. Okay, so that's the file uploading complete. If you're interested in getting your shared matches on GEDmatch, that can take a few days before it's available, but your ethnicity information is generally available fairly quickly, like within a few minutes. So back on your home page, look on that right hand menu again and scroll to DNA applications. Um, underneath you'll see lots of tools, but we're going to look at admixture heritage. So for today, we're just gonna do the basics. Um, just leave the processing at admixture proportions with link to Oracle for now. 
and we need to select a project. So you'll see seven project options. Now, what these give you access to are different calculators. So these projects are quite academic. It's not sort of as user-friendly and straightforward as Ancestry DNA or the other testing companies. Um, these are more like academic projects that are drawing on data that they've compiled. They're also much more focused on ancient DNA rather than sort of the last few generations. Um, so I'll give you a quick rundown of the seven projects so that you can think about which one might be best for you. So firstly, there's MDLP. Um, this one's a good general global calculator that widely suits everyone. Then there's Eurogenes, which is best for people with European ancestry because it focuses more strongly on Europe. Um, the next project listed is Dodecad. I have no idea if I'm saying that properly. Anyway, this one leans more towards Asian and African ancestry, but it's likely useful pe um, for people with mixed ancestry. Then we have Harappa World, which again, I don't know if I'm saying that right, <laughs> um, which is geared towards South Asians. Um, that's Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis and Sri Lankans. Ethiohelix is an African based project, particularly those with East African ancestry. Um, the next one is Punt DNAL, however you say it, um, which is particularly focused on ancient DNA. And the last one is Jed Rosia DNA, which is for Eurasian, Indian and Asian DNA. Um, several of these projects have websites which you can look up um, if you want more in-depth information. But just be warned, they're quite technical, so don't expect it to be easy reading. <laughs> um, so when you're choosing a project calculator to run your DNA sample through, just try to pick the one that best represents that best represents your own ancestral background. Of course, you're welcome to use any of the calculators, but the results are likely to be more accurate if you use the best calculator for your own heritage. So say I choose Eurogenes, being that I have European ancestry, so it'll fit well for me. Um, I click continue and now you'll see that I have to enter my kit number and choose a calculator model to use. Now, don't freak out here. It looks like we have to make so many choices. Um, the best thing to do is honestly just play around with the different calculators and see what you get. Um, the thing to remember is that the number after the K is the number of populations that are in the test. So, for example, K13 is running your data against 13 of their populations. Um, the more populations that are in the test, the um, more chances there are for inaccuracy. But play around with it and just see what you get. It's up to you if you want to enter the ethnicity at the bottom there. Okay, so here's a few of my results as an example. There's the Eurogenes K13 admixture proportions, which um, obviously shows a lot of North Atlantic and Baltic and some other stuff in there too. Interesting that I've got um, more American Indian in there than Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> um, all right. So Eurogenes hunter-gatherer versus farmer admixture proportions. That one's interesting. Um, mostly Baltic hunter-gatherer and some Mediterranean farmer. Uh, then we've got MDLP World 22 admixture proportions, which is, um, yeah, mostly Northeast European with some other stuff in there. All right, the last one here that I'll show you is the MDLP K16, which I really like this one because they've actually got the descriptions of the different ethnicities. So yeah, there you go. So most people seem to say that if you're inexperienced and you just want an alternative to check against your ordinary ancestry DNA test, um, and if you've got European ancestry, then the Eurogenes K13 and K15 are the best. But like I said, just play around with it. Just have fun with it. <laughs> um, one caveat is that you shouldn't do the J test if you don't have Jewish ancestry because it can give you some false results. Um, another thing to remind you of is something that I've mentioned in my other ethnicity videos, which is that there's no perfect test to prove your ethnicity. Um, all the tests use different sample data, so you'll get varied results. Um, as you use different tests. So don't worry about those varied results. As I've said, just pull all of your results together and see what patterns you can make out of that.
Okay, that's it for this video. I'll be doing more videos in this DNA series, so make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you're notified when I upload. Have a great day, guys, and good luck with your research. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye!